healthy weekend. So we've been dealing with the heat. Did you make it outside yeah. yesterday? Yes, I did. And boy, yeah, now it's just like crank up the AC or even go turn on your car before you actually have to drive because it is brutal out there. Oh my goodness. And Alicia and Max, yesterday was our 21st 100 degree day so far oh, this yes. year. And we got up to 100 degrees yesterday in the afternoon. Today we'll probably make 22. And just to put this in comparison, we're only 20 days off from our third 100 degree day year back in 2013. So we're probably going to add on to that number today. And of course, we've got July and we've got August ahead too. And even in September, we can see triple digit days sometimes in September. But here's the thing today should should be our last 100 degree day for at least a little while because we are going to see a cool front move through tomorrow and that's going to bring us the opportunity for some widely scattered showers and storms through most of this upcoming week. Right now outside though it's 78 degrees, 74 in New Braunfels, 73 in Gonzales, 73 in Yavaldi, 79 in Del Rio and 77 in Catula. We zoom out and you can see where that front is. Look, it's only 63 degrees in Amarillo and even further by Behind that front, we've got temperatures in the 40s and 50s in the Rockies. We will not get that cool. We will not even get into the 60s, but we are going to be seeing a return to more uh, average temperatures, which was in the low 90s and the potential for rain. So let me take you through the future gas. Today is going to be hot and generally quiet. That front will be moving through early tomorrow morning. It could be dampened spots in the early morning commute. We'll be seeing isolated showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder early tomorrow morning, close to seven o'clock. Then as we head into the afternoon, some scattered showers and storms are going to develop. Now they will be widely scattered. There will be those that get rain and those that unfortunately miss out on the rain, but at least the chance for showers and storms is there. Then as we head into the rest of the week, including Tuesday, scattered showers and storms are possible once again. Wednesday and Thursday, we'll see some tropical moisture move its way in from the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to keep some isolated showers and storms in the forecast on Wednesday and Thursday as well. So here's how the rain chances break down for you. 40% tomorrow and on Tuesday widely scattered. There will be those that get rain and then those that miss out on the rainfall and then more isolated in nature Wednesday and Thursday. But as I just showed you, that is going to help those afternoon temperatures come down to the seasonable average, which is close to the low 90s. How much rain are we talking about? Well, not enough to help us out in major way with the drought. Rainfall potential Monday through Thursday, widespread a quarter to half an inch of rain. The areas that are really going to get a lot of rain are closer to the coast, closer to Houston, one to three inches of rain expected out there. We're going to continue to keep you updated today, though just going to be hot. All right. Uh, today's case at 12 hour forecast calls for temperatures rising from the 70s where they're at right now into the 80s by 10 o'clock. Then as we head into the lunch hour, it'll be 90 degrees with mostly sunny skies during the peak heat of the day from about 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. There could be a stray shower. But don't bank on that rain chance today. OK, it's only 10%. Otherwise, it's going to be another 100 degree day for us. We'll get up to 101, 5 and 6 p.m. Elsewhere, it'll be 101 in New Braunfels and at Port S.A., 101 Castroville, 101 in Hondo and in Givaldi, 97 in Bernie and 97 in Bulverde, 98 up in Kerrville. Here's a look at that seven day forecast, putting it all together for you. Scattered showers and storms, widely scattered showers and storms Monday and Tuesday becoming more isolated Wednesday and Thursday highs will only be in the low 90s. That is an improvement, my friends, in the forecast. And coming up, you've got one last day to enjoy some time by the pool this weekend. <laughs> I'll have that poolside forecast again for you. Max, Alicia. Didn't right. think I'd be so excited to see 90s. I uh, know. Wasn't this excited to see rain? Ah, yes, finally. Thank you, Sarah. 616, 78 degrees out. If you're opting for healthy home cooked meals, these days you might see your grocery bill going up. How to stick to your budget while sticking with those wellness goals. Welcome back. Double digit price increases at the grocery store. We've all seen them. Food price hikes at levels not seen since the 1970s. But experts say there are still ways to eat healthy without breaking the bank. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more in today's Health Minute. 
Rising food costs hitting wallets hard. The latest inflation report shows the cost of groceries surged by almost 12 percent for the year ending in May. That's the largest year on year increase since 1979 and staples like eggs, fish and meat seeing the largest jump in prices. Right now, it's safe to say that just eating is getting more expensive, but you're still able to find some really inexpensive, healthy options. To cut your grocery bill, registered dietitian Amy Patton says make more meatless meals. Use beans and lentils as protein instead. Cut your own produce. Pre-cut fruits and veggies are pricey. When it comes to produce, consider going frozen or get it canned. I'd rather someone who's eating on a very tight budget go for a canned vegetable and rinse it off versus not getting a vegetable in at all. Choose store brands. Patton says many times they're less expensive. Stick to your grocery list. Don't shop while hungry and stock up on healthy staples that you can use in different meals. Today, maybe you're making, um, you know, a big stew or a big stir fry and you're using uh, a recipe that calls for a cup of celery, for example. Maybe you take that celery and you dice it up or slice it and then you have it for snacks with hummus or peanut butter. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. So I broke one of the cardinal rules. I went shopping when I was super hungry and you don't realize it until you get to the checkout aisle and you're like, what did I get? Yeah, What's what was the worst item you got? Sushi. Oh, that's not too bad. Mm. Not too bad. You didn't see the I bill. I got chips. Okay. <laughs> chips is good though. Yeah. You know, snacking food. Brain food. Absolutely. For sure. Time now is 621, 78 degrees out. All right, forming bonds over a shared love for hiking. After the break, how a local group is bringing people together to explore the great outdoors and get some exercise. Welcome back. From stay-at-home orders to Zoom dates and remote working, and even as things have gotten back to normal, many are still longing for real in-person connection. In the latest New You, producer, producer Alyssa Medina introduces us to a group who is using their shared love for hiking and inclusion to forge those friendships in nature. I work from home, and so Saturday mornings and sometimes Sundays is my time to get outside, to be with other people. I do this primarily to socialize. Getting active is just like a byproduct. For San Antonio plus size women hiking, the group is about more than getting fresh air and exercise, but more importantly, inclusion. You don't have to have tons of hiking experience or be at a certain fitness level. Just because our group's name is plus size, we have women of all sizes, age ranges, and so there's really a mix of abilities within our group. Tiffany Patterson is the official second member of the group. She says it was the brainchild of an unfortunate event when the founder, Mari Cruz Zarate, was left behind on a hike. She didn't like that feeling, and so she wanted to start a group where uh, it was a space for women of different sizes who didn't feel the need that they had to like keep up or they couldn't manage. No woman left behind. That's their motto something they accomplish by simply taking time to stop and smell the roses. We hike at a nature-admiring pace. We made it to the Yucca Trail! Yay! Yay! People will tell you if, if you go hiking with Christina, you'll get shown all the different plants, all the different critters, we'll stop and look at stuff. So it's not a power workout when I go hiking. It's, uh, it feeds all the senses. Is anybody new to San Antonio doesn't know the history of this tower? Christina Dim is one of the group's hike leaders. She quickly earned the title thanks to her years of experience hiking in Alaska. Finding this group was crucial when she moved to Texas. It was a, a lifeline for me because I'm retired, so I didn't have any way to socialize. And the fact that this hiking group is just a group of ladies um, meant that I could really just kind of open up and be myself. The group has become a safe space for these ladies on and off the trails. We've become very good friends, a lot of us, and have gone on road trips together. We've done Enchanted Rock, we've done Lost Maples, we've done Palmetto State Park. We've even gone to Colorado Bend State Park. I myself had never camped before I joined this group and now I've been on multiple camping trips. Creating that sense of community and acceptance for all women is what they're all about and inspiring each other to get out of their comfort zone. We want to encourage people to learn to love the outdoors. It's not a race. We're not in competition. We just like to get together and enjoy each other's company. For New You, Alyssa Medina, KSAT 12 News. That is awesome. 
So the San Antonio area is a great place for these ladies to go hiking. The city actually ranks number 36 on the list of best cities for hiking in a study from Lone Star and lots of places where you can enjoy the great outdoors, including trails at Eisenhower Park on the far north side, Friedrich Wilderness Park, northwest side, Medina River Natural Area, far south side. We have a closer look at all the trails right now on KSAT.com. Do you ever get out and about hiking? Oh, yeah. Well, not hiking. Mm -hmm. more, I'm more of a runner. Okay. But, I mean, just being in the outdoors, even if it's for a quick five, ten-minute walk, it does wonders for your mind and, of course, your body. It's true. So good for these ladies. That is so awesome. Very inspiring. Time now, 628, 78 degrees out. All right, June is almost over. However, still plenty of time to celebrate pride in South Texas. And if you missed last night's parade, we have a look at the festivities you can take part in today. What the f is happening? Like, and you could just hear da 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 da. You can hear kids screaming. A Uvalde mother taking us through arriving at Robb Elementary moments after the gunman opened fire on students and teachers. Plus, how she rushed in, saving her children and others. That's next in our next half hour. Good morning and happy Sunday. It is 632 this morning. So what the theme song of the morning is, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. 22. There you go. 22. See, I wasn't going to sing. Why not? I, you know, I'm into it. Not a voice uh, that's well, great. We're not talented we should explain in those. why that is. The theme song. Why yes. are we feeling 22 here in San Antonio, Sarah? Because today's high of 101 will likely be the 22nd 100 degree day this year. <laughs> So a chipper song for something that isn't so joyful. Uh, but hey, if you want to enjoy some time by the pool or outside today, this is your poolside forecast. By noon, we're going to be at 90 degrees, 96 at 2 p.m. At 5 p.m., there's a 10% chance for a stray shower, but not a, that's not a good chance at all, <laughs> unfortunately, for us today. Uh, but the UV index is going to be extreme, so skin damage time within about 10 minutes or so. So what's ahead? What are we going to talk about in the forecast? Well, today, as I just mentioned, feeling 22. It's another 100-degree day. But but here's the thing. Tomorrow, we are going to see a cool front move through. That's going to allow for widely scattered thunder showers for your Monday. And in the week ahead, too, we'll have some tropical moisture. So just about each day, a 30 to 40 percent rain chance. That is a change in our weather pattern. Today, we're likely going to say bye to that triple digit heat streak, at least temporarily. We've still got July and August to get through. But we'll be talking about those rain chances, how much rain that may come up with, and of course, I'll show you a look at the future cast as well, and we'll talk about the tropics. So a lot coming up. Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. And an Uvalde mother who was outside of Robb Elementary when a gunman opened fire says she saw law enforcement surrounding the school, but not rushing in. So Angelique Gomez's overwhelming frustration landed her in handcuffs. When she got out of the handcuffs, she ran into the school. She saved her children and she saved other students as well. She tells our John Paul Barajas her fight and struggle with law enforcement isn't over. Somebody jump out of the window. Oh, the, the kids. Kid. They're getting the kids out. In that moment, I was like, they're really happy to see each other. They thought that they're each other, that they're alive. The boys were crying very hard and saying our friends are di have died today. Angelique Gomez says she'll never forget reuniting with her two sons at Robb Elementary, a place she's been to for years, but this time having to run past officers to make it inside to get her kids out of harm's way. I left work and did their job for my two sons, so... They didn't, they felt me, they felt me and my sons and all the rest who died and the kids who were in the building and that are traumatized by it now. Are you injured? Oh my God, my God. Where? Where? She, along with other parents, cried and begged officers to run in. Gomez was handcuffed briefly for not cooperating. After being let go, she jumped a fence and went into the school not once, but twice. It's something that EPS director has said is exactly what officers who were trained had tactical gear and weapons should have done to stop the massacre. While inside, Gomez got her kids as well as told a few other classrooms to make a run for it. Now a month removed from the tragedy, some families are lawyering up. This is an unusual case because here you have police actually preventing people from protecting third persons or protecting their own children. Men that were, I believe, tased and pushed down. As a matter of fact, Angelique was falsely arrested or falsely imprisoned for a short period of time. 
Gomez and her attorney, Mark DiCarlo, are planning on filing multiple lawsuits in this case over law enforcement response and school security, as well as defending possible charges of tampering with an active scene. The sacrifice is worth it. Living and breathing is worth it. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Right now, both Gomez and her attorney say they're in no rush to file the lawsuit because they want to make sure they have all the information needed before taking this case to district court. New this morning, police investigating an early morning crash on the north side that ended with one person in the hospital. So take a look. Police tell us a woman was driving on Blanco Road when she T-boned a driver in a pickup truck at the intersection of Bassey. Now the driver in the truck slammed through a rock wall, landing in a nearby parking lot. He was taken to the hospital at last check in critical condition. Right now, police trying to figure out why all of this happened. And just southwest of downtown, a different crash. Police say two drivers collided at the intersection of West Malone Avenue and Frelon Street. One person was taken to the hospital. No one is facing charges. In your morning headlines, the lawyer for Brian Laundrie's family releasing his handwritten confession of Gabby Petito's murder. The video bloggers had a troubled relationship on the road, which he recounted in his personal notebook. So in this eight page notebook released so far, he claims that Gabby had been seriously injured while hiking in Wyoming. Laundrie claims he took her life in a mercy killing because she was in extreme pain. Uh, the county coroner ruled her cause of death was homicide by strangulation. A Florida court ordered or expected to make a ruling on a wrongful death lawsuit filed by the Petito family against Laundrie's parents soon. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden is headed to Spain ahead of the upcoming NATO summit. Mrs. Biden leaves for Spain today and her schedule includes meeting with Queen Leticia and visiting Ukrainian refugees in Madrid. President Joe Biden will join her later this week for the start of the summit. He is currently in Austria attending the G7 summit. Back here at home, has violent crime seemed like it's been on the rise here in the Alamo City? It seems like almost every morning there are worse and worse shootings to tell you about. Now, last weekend, we heard from the police chief, William McManus, and he talked to us at the scene of what started as a family barbecue and ended with seven people shot. Now, Chief McManus is set to join us on Leading SA this morning at 8 a.m. We're going to be talking about local crime, the reasons behind it, and what's being done. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, 8 a.m., for our full conversation. Time now, 638, 78 degrees out. And the Spurs. Hey, go Spurs, go. We got three new teammates. Look at this. They were all in the AT&T Center yesterday showing off what they got. New jerseys. Whew. New team. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm excited. Draft <laughs> night was exciting. I, maybe I just love draft night, but oof, we got a young squad and a lot of optimism on the horizon. We're going to explain. Let's take a live look with live cam. We know it's going to be a hot day. Max Massey sang for us earlier this morning. He did not. <laughs> <laughs> he, he put statements out there. All right, you guys, we'll be back with more. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go a new look team. The Spurs introducing their three brand new first round draft picks yesterday. Press conference at the AT&T Center. The jerseys already made. Take a look. So ninth overall pick, Jeremy Sohan, number 10. Look at that. This is cool. You excited? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for his <laughs> looks, too, before game days. <laughs> so the admit. jersey famously worn by another man who loved to dye his hair while here in San Antonio, Dennis Rodman. Because, you know, on, yeah. it dyes his hair. All different colors. I should try it. I know. Uh, number 20 overall, Malachi Branham will wear number 22. And the 25th overall pick, Blake Wesley, gets number 14. All three of these guys, one and dones out of college, spending a single year as a freshman. And it's another sign that San Antonio is embracing this youth movement. So how old are these guys? We are, we are just turned 19. So uh, I remember last year they dropped uh, Josh Primo. Uh, he's a young cat. So... Got a lot, a lot of young people on this team, uh, a lot of development. So, yeah, it's going. We got to learn a lot. So, we we spend as much time teaching them how to drive as we do <laughs> yeah. teaching yeah. them how to play defense. So. We still need our driving license. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
I do not. Uh, I yeah. do not. Uh, I don't uh, even have my permits. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want a car? Hopefully, if I if I if I pass. <laughs> all right. So they are young, but they're all very talented, and all these players brought their families to San Antonio for the festivities. And with those three, Josh Primo, who was one of the youngest people in the draft last year, obviously Dejounte. I mean, look, you have these three still very much working with the organization. We know David Robinson is a very familiar face. So young, but they could not have better role models like Greg Popovich. And they have a great city supporting them. That's, That's true. true. That's true. Welcome to San Antonio, you guys. Go Spurs, go. Go, not triple digits, go. Oh. <laughs> we are going to be at 100 degrees, but this could be our last 100 degree day for at least a little while in San Antonio. Outside right now, it is uh, 78 degrees and it is humid. Dew points are in the low 70s right now. Uh, now that humidity is going to come down a little bit, but you can see the clouds out there. You can see the haze on the horizon from the humidity. And again, it's a warm start to the day, but this is how hot it's going to be around South Central Texas. It'll be 101 in San Antonio, New Braunfels, the metro area, but up to 103 out west toward Del Rio Eagle Pass in the upper 90s in the hill country in Kerrville. So a hot day for you. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Seeing those clouds out there through about 10 and then we'll start to see skies clear even more. It'll be in the 80s by 10, 90 degrees by noon. Southeast winds today 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then in the afternoon temperatures will be in the 90s. We'll top off at 101 degrees 5, 6 p.m. And yeah, you'll notice there's a 10% chance for a stray shower during the peak heating hours of the day, 3 p.m. to about 8 p.m. But don't pick on the rain today. Much better rain chances in our near future. We'll be looking at widely scattered showers and storms through most of this week, and that's why temperatures come down quite a bit. Our highs have been steadily near 100 degrees for several days in a row, but starting tomorrow, our highs will come down to more seasonably average in the low 90s in the the coming days. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that there is a cool front that's going to be moving through South Central Texas. So as I said outside right now, it's anything but cool. It's in the 70s. It is warm. It is humid. But look out up to the north. There's quite a bit of a temperature change up there. Uh, temperatures are in the 40s and 50s across the Rockies and dropping into the 60s in Amarillo. We're not going to get into the 40s, 50s or even in the 60s. But again, this cool front is going to to be bringing us a chance for rain. You can see that there's already some rain across the central plains in Kansas and in Oklahoma along that front. This front is going to couple with some tropical moisture. Notice that there are some storms out near New Orleans right now and off the coast of Florida. These are disorganized and they only have a 20% chance of developing into a tropical depression or, or something stronger. So not a good chance to become organized, but still what this is going to do is it's going to send some tropical moisture our way. Anywhere you see this red color, that's some high moisture content in the atmosphere. That's going to be moving across the Gulf of Mexico and increasing in San Antonio by Monday at the same time that that cool front is going to be pushing through South Central Texas. So let me take you through the future cast. Early tomorrow morning as that front is moving through, there could be some isolated showers, perhaps even an isolated storm during the early morning commute. Not everybody's going to see rain, but it could be damp in spots. So keep that in mind. And then during the day tomorrow into the afternoon and evening, we'll see widely scattered showers and storms. Unfortunately, not everyone is going to see rain, but those that do will see a decent downpour or two during the afternoon and early evening hours tomorrow as well. Then that tropical moisture lingers around, hangs around through about Thursday. And so that's why we have the chance for widely scattered showers and storms Monday through Thursday. The chance only 30 to 40 percent, but this is a welcome weather pattern change for us, especially since it has been so dry with only a measly 10 percent rain chance here and there over the coming days, 30 to 40 percent rain chance. As far as rainfall totals go, it's not going to be a drought denture. All right, maybe up to a quarter to half an inch of rain with most of the heaviest of the rainfall being near the Houston Galveston coastal area, one to three inches of rain out there closer to that center of tropical moisture. 
moisture. Here's a look at that forecast, though. Those temperatures are going to come down 101 today, but only 96 tomorrow with a 40% chance for widely scattered showers and storms. Even cooler, quote unquote, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Highs will still be in the low 90s, but again, good to see some rain on there, at least a chance and also good to see those temperatures coming down. Alicia, Max. Absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 648, 77 degrees now. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. San Antonio's official Pride Parade brought out a sea of colors on Main Street last night, promoting people to live their true, authentic selves. The Pride Bigger Than Texas Parade is bringing people together people from all walks of life. Main Street lined with the colors of the rainbow as people join to celebrate and stand together. Yesterday we witnessed a historic overruling of a, a Supreme Court ruling that um, could potentially affect our LGBTQIA plus community and families. And so it's very important that all of us come out today and show support and stand together as one to, to help um, drive forward a more positive future for our community. All right, so today is the big finale of the Pride celebration. It's the Pride in the Park at Fiesta Texas event. That'll be surely bringing a lot of people. And that's not the only Pride event left happening this month. Happening today, Centro San Antonio will host its third annual Family Pride Day at Madison Square Park. It starts at 10 this morning and ends at 2 this afternoon. You can find more information on ksat.com. Okay, so all the social media regarding the events yesterday, awesome. Such a great turnout, and everything looks so cool. And the night parade, I mean, it yeah. draws out thousands, so it was a busy night last Absolutely. night. Time now, 6.53, 77 degrees out. We'll be right back after the break. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, protesters again taking to the streets following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. We have the latest on the state's widening abortion bans and the major companies promising to step in with help for employees seeking abortion services. Plus, the latest on Ukraine and a missile strike hitting a residential neighborhood in Kyiv. This as President Biden joins G7 leaders in Germany for a high-stakes summit, the war in Ukraine and soaring inflation topping the agenda. And air travel reaches its highest level since the start of the pandemic. We have some tips on how you can avoid travel nightmares ahead of the busy 4th of July weekend. It's all ahead here on GMA. A shootout out the, on the north side in a club parking lot. Now four people are being treated at area hospitals. Police say the trouble started just after 2 this morning on Blanco Road near Bassey. So far, officers think there was some kind of fight inside the Manhattan nightclub that then spilled out into the parking lot before escalating to gunfire. Two men were taken to the hospital in critical condition. Two other people drove themselves to the hospital. Police are now questioning multiple witnesses, but so far, no one has been arrested. Fire crews arriving to flames on the east side this morning after a fire erupted inside a home. San Antonio fire crews on the scene telling us those flames shooting out of a window around 1 a.m. This is the 300 block of Maryland Street near East Commerce and South New Braunfels. Now, firefighters say the fire did not spread beyond one room in the home. They say uh, now about $40,000 worth of damage is the home under construction, so no one was inside. Luckily, no injuries reported so far. Crews believe it was the electrical issue that caused the fire. We're going to see some clouds out there until the mid morning hours and then mostly sunny 90 at noon 101 for the high temperature. There is a 10% chance for a stray shower this afternoon. East southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Sun's going to set at 837 and it's still going to be warm by 10 will still be 90 degrees. But guess what? Things are changing. Ooh. We've got scattered widely scattered showers and storms possible Monday through Thursday of this upcoming week. Now again, we're not going to see rain every day in San Antonio. Uh, but there is the chance every day, and that is a welcome change for us. Here's what's going to happen to those temperatures. They'll fall from the triple digits today into the mid 90s tomorrow, low 90s Tuesday through Thursday with those chances for widely scattered showers and storms. As for Friday and Saturday, though, we'll be seeing those temperatures rise up. But hey, it's something different, something we're looking forward to. And of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on air, online and on the KSAT 
that weather authority app. You know, Max and Alicia, as far as rainfall totals go from Monday through Thursday, there will be pockets of a quarter to half inch of rainfall. Uh, so not again, not everybody's going to get that drought denting healthy rainfall for us, but it is something different and we're looking forward to talking about it, keeping you updated all week long. Now, even with the leveling out to the 90s, which is crazy to think about, are we still on pace for the hottest June on record? We are, we are, because there's only a couple more days left <laughs> and we've had 100 degree weather for most of June. So it's likely gonna be the hottest June on record. Like you said, a welcome change for this week. All right, we Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We're going to be back here at 8 o'clock. We have leading SA. We expect to hear from Chief William McManus. San Antonio Police talk about crime and what is being done. We'll see you soon. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The mother who rushed past police to enter Robb Elementary, saving her kids and more, while well, she now steps up and talks out. What happened and what comes next? We hear from her in just a bit. And a gunman is on the run this morning after San Antonio police say they shot four people on the north side, sending them all to the hospital. The details are coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 79 degrees now. Talk of the morning, I don't know about you, I'm feeling 22. We could hit number 22, triple digit day of the year already. Woo. You seem very excited about that. Uh, you know what, I'm excited digits. because the forecast looks good for the future. <laughs> and enter Sarah Spivey. It does, Max and Alicia. We are going to have the chance for rain this week. Uh, you know, it's been a while since we've been able to even put a decent chance for rain in the forecast. Of course, we'll talk about that, but we've got to get through today. Outside right now, it is 80 degrees. And those that dew point, which is 72 degrees right now, makes it feel like it's 84. So we've got high humidity, warm conditions out there right now. We've also got a few clouds. Here's a look at the satellite and uh, the temperatures as well. Just some puffy cumulus clouds out there early this morning. It's 78 in Hondo, 75 in Bandera, 75 in Bernie, 77 in New Braunfels, and 77 in Converse. A warm start to to our day, but it's going to get even warmer in the afternoon. 101 for the high temperature. There is an off chance for a stray shower, uh, about a 10% chance this afternoon. But as I've been hinting, better rain chances in the forecast in the coming days, all thanks to a cool front and some tropical moisture. We'll talk about that and how quote unquote cool temperatures will get in just a bit. Max Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. And new this morning, gunshots ring out in a Northside parking lot, leaving four people hurt, two in critical condition. Police say this happened at 2.30 in the parking lot of the Manhattan nightclub in the 3800 block of Blanco Road. That's near Mandalay Drive. Officers tell us there was a disturbance inside the nightclub, but that escalated with a confrontation happening outside. Multiple shell casings were found at the scene. Two men were transported to University Hospital. They're in critical condition. Police say two other people who were injured managed to get themselves to the hospital. Their condition is unknown. Authorities are now questioning multiple witnesses, but no arrests have been made. And another person in the hospital this morning after a terrifying crash. San Antonio firefighters tell us a woman T-boned a pickup truck. and The impact sent the truck through a rock wall. So take a look. This was the situation just before 3 a.m. This is the intersection of Blanco and Bassey Roads. A firefighter is on the scene telling us the collision sent that pickup through a rock while landing in a parking lot of the Elena Village Shopping Center. The driver of the truck taken to a nearby hospital. Police still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened. And another crash on the south side also sent a driver to the hospital. This crash happened earlier just after two this morning at West Malone and Freelon Street. San Antonio police say two vehicles collided in the intersection. One person was taken to downtown Baptist Hospital in fair to good condition. Police are calling the crash an accident. Some of the top stories we're following this morning. An investigation now underway after a plane crash in Kerrville and it ended with a fire near the Kerrville Kerr County Airport. So this is all according to the Kerrville Police Department. The plane went down yesterday evening near the campus of Our Lady of the Hills College Prep on State Highway 27. 
Kerrville firefighters able to put out the flames. The Texas Department of Public Safety, they're handling the investigation. Details as to what type of plane and what caused the crash still under investigation. Right now, no word on any injuries. We are staying on top of the story. We do expect more updates, more information throughout the day. All right, so in the aftermath of Uvalde, we are now hearing a lot of people speak out. We hear from one mother who rushed past police, rushing into the elementary school, taking her children out after she heard gunfire. This is Angeli Gomez. Again, she's a mother of a student at Uvalde. We know she broke through a police line to run into Robb Elementary on the day of that deadly school shooting. So Angeli Gomez says she saw law enforcement surrounding the school, but she saw them not rushing and her overwhelming frustration initially landing her in handcuffs outside of Robb Elementary. But once she was unrestrained, she was able to go into the school, save her children and bring out other students as well. Gomez sat down with John Paul Barajas and reveals her fight and struggle with law enforcement isn't over. Somebody jump out the window. Oh, the, the kids, kid. they're getting the kids out. In that moment, I was like, they're really happy to see each other. They got that they're each other, that they're alive. The boys were crying very hard and saying our friends are di have died today. Angeli Gomez says she'll never forget reuniting with her two sons at Robb Elementary, a place she's been to for years, but this time having to run past officers to make it inside to get her kids out of harm's way. I left work and did their job for my two sons, so... They didn't, they felt me, they felt me and my sons and all the rest who died and the kids who were in the building and that are traumatized by it now. Are you injured? Oh my God, my where, where? She, along with other parents, cried and begged officers to run in. Gomez was handcuffed briefly for not cooperating. After being let go, she jumped a fence and went into the school not once, but twice. It's something that EPS director has said is exactly what officers who were trained had tactical gear and weapons should have done to stop the massacre. While inside, Gomez got her kids as well as told a few other classrooms to make a run for it. Now a month removed from the tragedy, some families are lawyering up. This is an unusual case because here you have police actually preventing people from protecting third persons or protecting their own children. Men that were, I believe, tased and pushed down. As a matter of fact, Angelique was falsely arrested or falsely imprisoned for a short period of time. Gomez and her attorney, Mark DiCarlo, are planning on filing multiple lawsuits in this case over law enforcement response and school security, as well as defending possible charges of tampering with an active scene. The sacrifice is worth it. Living and breathing is worth it. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Well, it seems like violent crime has been on the rise here in the Alamo City and seemingly across the country. You know, in the last couple of weekends, we've had multiple shootings, terrible shootings, seemingly day after day. We're telling you about worse and worse violent crime happening here in San Antonio. And people are concerned. So joining us today in today's leading essay segment is Chief William McManus. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. All right, so Chief, in the last few weekends alone, we reported on a father and four-year-old son shot in their living room. That was this weekend. I mean, Alicia just talked about the story, four people shot overnight. We had the three women shot with an AK-47 just sitting in their car in Castle Hills. And then last weekend, we heard from you outside of the what started as a family barbecue, ending with seven people shot. So numbers-wise, are we seeing an increase in violent crimes? We are. Uh, we're seeing an increase in, in violent crimes gun crime for sure and it, like in so many cases um a lot of the the uh gun violence is due to risky behavior i'll call it but it, it altercations uh last night there was an altercation outside a bar uh off of uh blanco on blanco uh and so many we see like that and it's it's frustrating because people are real quick to pull a gun uh, to try to settle an argument. And, and, and again, that's what we see time after time. In the past, you have told us about the partnership with crim criminologists. How has that gone and what does it entail? And what are the goals? We're working with criminologists from UTSA on a, on a violence prevention plan. And we've, we started that uh, several weeks ago, we're, we've been meeting with them on a regular basis. They're, they're scouring the data, crime data, and uh, we're actually scheduled to meet with them again. Uh, I believe it's right after the 4th 
uh, they'll have a uh, at least a blueprint of that plan uh, moving forward. We expect to have that in place probably sometime toward the end of the summer and into the fall. Now, in, in terms of this violent crime we're seeing, from your perspective, why is this happening? I mean, you've been here a while in San Antonio. We've been here a while in San Antonio. It seems like just recently we've seen this uptick. You know, I, I think there's a couple different reasons for that. There's a lot of opinions out there about it. Uh, one of them is the pandemic. I don't, I'm not buying into that opinion, but uh, I do believe that, that, you know, the police department is just, or law enforcement is just one aspect of the criminal justice system. There are other facets of the criminal justice system. And, and unless we are operating in sync, um, I think this is what you get. But right now, I, I'm, I'm concerned, be very candid about it. I'm concerned that there are several things that, that lead, to, um, lead to the violence, lead to the repeat offenders being still being out on the street. And I think that um, low bail, no bail is a problem. You have people who are being arrested for uh, a variety of crimes, violent crimes included, who are, who are being put back on the street, no pretrial detention, witnesses won't talk because they're out there and they're afraid that, uh, of retaliation. So, um, you know, that, and again, a number of other factors, uh, I think contribute to this, uh, to this ongoing violent crime issue we're having right now. Uh, I think there's a, a, a lack of fear of consequence. Um, uh, and, and I'm concerned about it. I, I think that, I think that this, this movement to keep people out of jail is a problem. It, it, I think that, I believe that people who commit violent crimes should be in jail period. And, and if, if they're using a gun to commit those violent crimes, absolutely they need to be in jail because what we're seeing are, are repeat offenders. We have 60% of the people that we've arrested over the past few years, uh, we've arrested before. Uh, and many of them, again, for the same crime. So this is an issue for me. Uh, it's an issue for the police department. And, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure how we get a handle on it without all the facets of the all, all the other parts of the criminal justice system working in sync. Oh, before you go, because we're running out of time for parents, families <clears throat> watching. It is a Sunday morning. You know, these families want to hear from you. They might be scared. They hear us talking about these shootings, these violent crimes. What is your message to them? As I mentioned, there are exceptions to this. But a, a lot of. I'd say the majority of the violent crimes are they're not random. Uh, they are they are happening because of people who engage in risky behavior. Again, there's exceptions to this, but this is what we're seeing a great deal of. And minus the risky behavior, your chances of becoming the victim of a violent crime are slim. And, and again, there's exceptions to this, but that's the rule. Chief, well, if you're concerned, I'm sure parents out there, you know, the community is as well, but it's they appreciate you coming on here and speaking us and taking the time to do so. Thank you so much for your time this morning. You're welcome. Good seeing you. You too. Time now, 812, 79 degrees out. All right, coming up, the FDA ordered jewel vaping devices be removed from store shelves across the nation, but not so fast. Find out why that order has now been delayed. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 79 now. How hot will it get? When will we see rain? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Welcome back. It's going to be a very, very hot day. Already it's humid. It's gross out there. <laughs> I know. And today, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Nice. Are you going to hit that note? No, no, no. I'll let y'all sing. That's, Not that we're 22 years old, no. but that <laughs> today is going to be the 22nd day where we likely see 100 degrees. So far, we've had 21 days of triple digit weather this year. We could very well at least be in the top three 
of the triple digit days on record. Records go all the way back to 1885. And my friends, we still have July and August and even September to go through. So we very well could be in that top three there. Today, we're going to be at 101, 22 days of triple digit weather. But notice that in the week ahead, those temperatures actually come down quite a bit. Our average high this time of year is 93 and it's going to be close to average through a good portion of the week. Reason for that cool front and tropical moisture outside right now, though it we definitely have the moisture. It feels humid outside. It's 80 degrees outside right now. 78 in New Braunfels, 76 in Uvalde, 78 in Del Rio. As we zoom out, we can see where the front is. It's 61 degrees in Amarillo. Now we're not going to get in the 60s or even in the 50s, but temperatures will come down closer to average. And this cool front is going to spark off some widely scattered showers and storms. Let me take you through the future cast early tomorrow morning as that front moves through right around the time of the early morning commute, there could be a few isolated showers out there, a couple of damp spots on the roads, but really the better chance for rain in the day comes during the second part of the day when we'll have widely scattered showers and storms in the area around the San Antonio metro area. It is not going to rain everywhere, but there is that chance for widely scattered showers and storms, not only tomorrow, but also on Tuesday as well, especially in the second part of the day in the afternoon. Then as we head into Wednesday and Thursday, some tropical moisture is going to come into play and that'll keep rain chances in the forecast through about Thursday. Although the timing and the amount of rain is a little bit more fuzzy for Wednesday and Thursday with that tropical moisture. Still uh, just about every day this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we have a chance for widely scattered showers and storms. How much rain are we talking? Well, it's not going to put uh, much of a dent in the drought at all. Unfortunately for us, about a quarter to half an inch of rain is likely in many backyards from Monday through Thursday, with most of the rainfall falling across the Texas clo coast closer to Houston uh, and Galveston, one to three inches of rain. But hey, even though it's not going to rain everywhere and there's not going to be a ton of healthy rainfall amounts, at least there's the chance for rain to help shake things up from this triple digit streak we've been seeing. OK, today in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, though, just heat more of the same for us. Around noon, we'll be at 90 degrees with these clouds clearing. And then in the afternoon, we'll be in the 90s. By 3 p.m., we start to introduce a 10 percent chance for a stray shower. That's it. We'll be at 101 for the high temperature, 5, 6 p.m. And tonight uh, it's still going to be warm with temperatures in the 90s past sunset at 838. It'll be 101 in New Braunfels and in Seguin, 101 in Hondo, 101 in Uvalde, 102 in Poteet and in Pleasanton, 97 in Bernie and 97 in Bulverde, 98 in Kerrville. So more of the same today, but tomorrow is where we start to see those changes. Widely scattered showers and storms uh, possible Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Those highs drop from the triple digits to closer to seasonably average with highs in the low 90s. I'll take it, guys. Even though it's not going to rain every day, everywhere, it is a chance. And so we're saying there's a chance. I mean, and there's a relief, so I'll take it too. All right, we're dipping out of the triple digit degrees. For a little bit. Yeah. Time now, 820, 79 degrees out. Straight ahead, Instagram wants to know how old its users are. We've got the details on the new verification tools it's using to keep young kids safe while online. And the federal government's order to remove Juul vaping products from United States stores. Well, that order of removal has been delayed. We're going to explain why in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. The FDA ordered Juul vaping devices and pods to be removed from United States store shelves last week. But a U.S. appeals court blocking that order, at least temporarily. Now, the court's action comes as the vaping products company prepares its appeal of the FDA's ban that forces the company to remove the products from shelves and prohibits future sales. However, the court's ruling now allows Juul's legal team to review the FDA order. The FDA's ban came as a result of growing concerns that Juul products encourage dangerous smoking habits among underage users. And Instagram is testing new options to verify the age of its users to protect those under the age of 17 
from unwanted and unknown contact from adults, as well as inappropriate ads. The photo sharing service owned by Meta, the, P Meta, the parent company of Facebook, said it is testing two new ways to verify a user's age. One option is using software to estimate a person's age, and they're doing that based on facial, facial features after the user uploads a video selfie. The other option is for teens between the ages of 13 and 17 to list three mutual followers who must be at least 18 years old to confirm the user's age. All right, time now, 825, 79 degrees out. Still ahead, President Biden with a major announcement today, a major Russian export now banned how it could affect the country's economy. And a home under construction left with tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage after flames. What San Antonio Fire Department is now saying about the blaze, we have the latest from investigators after the break. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Anitia Barrera. It's Sunday, June 26th. I was ready for that one. It just piled up. I was not. Hello. You know what I am ready for, though? A relief. From the heat. Temperature. Yes. Some rain. Possibly. Yeah. Maybe. Sarah, good morning. <laughs> good morning, morning, guys. Hey, yeah, I love that. It was it was a quick like, oh, hey. <laughs> that was really Stay good. ready. Um, but yeah, we are going to see a little bit of relief from the heat this week in the form of widely scattered showers and storms, our best chance for rain in a while, and temperatures closer to the average, which is around 93 this time of year. Today, though, we got to get through the heat. Let's take a look outside with satellite and temperatures. You can see that it's 80 degrees in San Antonio, 79 in Hondo, 80 in Pleasanton, 78 in Del Rio, 75 in Kerrville, as is the usual. We are seeing some early morning clouds here, some puffy cumulus clouds in your neighborhood. It's 78 in Bulverde, 77 in Converse, 80 near Stinson, 81 in Castroville, and 79 in Hondo. But today, likely going to see 101 for the high temperatures. So what's ahead? What are we going to talk about? Another triple digit day today. Today would be our 22nd 100 degree day so far this year, and we're not even through June yet. We still got July and August to go, but tomorrow a cool front is going to move through bringing widely scattered thunder showers. Not everyone is going to see rain, but the chance for rain is there. And this week we'll have tropical moisture stick around, which should give us about a 30 to 40 percent chance for widely scattered showers and storms through about Thursday. So we'll be talking about this, including how much rain could be expected in the forecast in just a few moments. Alicia, Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters investigating after flames broke out at a construction site. This was the scene around one this morning at a home on the east side. Now, fire crews there telling us flames could have been seen coming from the windows of the building under construction. They arrived to the scene in the 300 block of Maryland. That's near South Walter Street. Investigators say they were to put out the fire quickly. They managed to keep the flames contained to only one room, didn't spread to any surrounding buildings, but the entire structure suffered water and smoke damage. Luckily, no injuries to any people reported, no one at home, because again, it was a construction site. Damage estimated at $40,000, but they're investigating, trying to figure out why this all happened. And protests across the country continue as 26 states are expected to eventually ban or severely restrict abortion. Now, a grassroots resistance movement on the rise that looks notably different than it did in the 1960s. ABC's Christine Sloan explains. The Supreme Court's decision ending constitutional protections for abortion is sparking protests across the country. In Rhode Island, a candidate for state Senate says her opponent, a Providence police officer, punched her at a rally. That officer has now been charged with simple assault. Outside the Supreme Court, two people were arrested for destruction of property, while some celebrated the court's decision. I honestly cried tears of joy. It's been something that we have been waiting for for so long. Justice Samuel Alito writing Roe was egregiously wrong and deeply damaging. Roe was on a collision course with the Constitution from the day it was decided. Some are now expressing concern after Justice Clarence Thomas argued in his concurring opinion the Supreme Court should reconsider other rulings codifying rights to contraception access and same-sex marriage. There's a very good chance that probably not in the next year or two, but within a few years, issues like contraception, 
or same-sex marriage uh, could actually be subject to revisiting. Abortion is now illegal for 31 million Americans in at least eight states, with 18 more likely to ban or severely restrict abortions in the coming days or weeks. Planned Parenthood is now filing a lawsuit in Utah to block the state's trigger ban. There's a lot of Utahns who don't agree with the trigger law that they put into effect. In Minnesota, the governor signed an executive order protecting women who seek abortions in his state from legal repercussions in their own state. And the Biden administration says the president is asking the Justice Department to challenge state laws restricting the right to travel to seek an abortion. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And in the aftermath from that major Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar taking to Facebook with this post, saying that he's the sheriff, but also a dad to two daughters. He says, quote, as their dad, I have no control over their adult bodies. As their sheriff, it is absolutely none of my business. I will not persecute Texas women or anyone else pursuing those same rights, end quote. He does go on to criticize the justice's decision, saying, quote, shame on the Supreme Court. In your morning headlines, a terrifying situation at a WeatherTech work campus in Illinois ends in gunfire. Three people shot, one dead, and now one person in custody. Police say a 27-year-old suspect was a temporary worker who allegedly robbed two co-workers at the manufacturing plant, then pulled a gun, shooting three people, killing one of them. One victim remains in critical condition. The third has been released from the hospital. The alleged shooter has been identified Charles McKnight Jr. of Chicago's Fernwood neighborhood. And an attorney for Ghislaine Maxwell wants to postpone her sentencing after she was placed on suicide watch. The former Jeffrey Epstein associate was set to be sentenced this Tuesday in Manhattan federal court for sex trafficking. Her attorney says Maxwell was abruptly removed from the general population and put in solitary confinement Friday, but still no word on why she was put on suicide watch. A motion to postpone her sentencing is expected to be introduced tomorrow, and she could be facing up to 55 years in jail. Well, heading to California, a fast-growing brush fire forcing evacuation of dozens of homes just west of Riverside. It's what's being called the Union Fire. It's already destroyed 95 acres. Here's the thing, though. Firefighters say it is 0% contained. Mandatory evacuation orders have been issued for residents of the Santa Ana River Bottom and surrounding areas. The cause of the fire still under investigation, not yet determined. And history is made as President Joe Biden signed what most are calling the sweeping, the most sweeping gun violence bill. The bipartisan compromise seemed unimaginable until a recent series of mass shootings, including the one that we saw close to home at Robb Elementary in Walde. The House gave final approval Friday after the Senate passed it on Thursday. President Biden signed the $13 billion legislation just before leaving Washington for two world leader summits in Europe. The legislation will toughen background checks for the youngest gun buyers, keep firearms from more domestic violence offenders, and it'll also help states put in place laws that make it easier for authorities to take weapons from people adjudged to be dangerous. Most of the money will help bolster mental health programs as well as eight schools. And as Alicia just alluded to, President Biden is overseas at the G7 summit. But before he left, the president taking to Twitter saying together the G7 will announce that we will ban the import of Russian gold. It's a major export that actually rakes in tens of billions of dollars a year for the country of Russia. While meeting with international leaders, President Joe Biden is aiming to sustain this global alliance to punish Russia for the invasion of Ukraine. Now, his trip comes as the four month old war shows no sign of slowing down and its aftershocks while well, leading to the global food and energy supply. That problem is only deepening. And President Biden first joins a meeting of the group of seven leading economic powers in the Bavarian Alps of Germany before traveling to Madrid for the NATO summit. And back here at home, it's another pandemic problem that requires some unique thinking to solve. All right, so that was the goal behind the Rescue United adoption event. Dozens of cats and dogs and, yes, even a horse. Yeah, they were on display to be adopted <laughs> at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium, a horse. Yeah, like so what, what makes this event different is that 13 different rescue organizations, they came together, brought their pets in need of a forever home. A horse can be a pet for mine. Okay. 
all to place, all to one place. Organizers say the need for people to adopt right now is overwhelming. We're all struggling because there's just too many animals on the street. And then with COVID, a lot of the vets were shut down. So that took away from all the free spay neuters that the local community could, you know, take advantage of. You know, I wonder if anyone was able to adopt the horse. This the guy's really cute though. Oh, look at him go. All these puppies and cats are so cute. All right, so the event also offered spay, neuter, vaccines, and microchip services. All right, time now, 839, 80 degrees out. Weather watchers got an eyeful, and what Oof. they saw had their hearts pounding. We'll tell you where three water spouts put on a show after the break. All right, let's take a live look. They weren't here. That's the important part, not in That's San Antonio. <laughs> Take a live look out there, 80 degrees now. How hot will it get? Here. And when will we see rain? KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. San Antonio is known as Military City USA, where every enlisted Air Force recruit starts their basic training at Lackland Air Force Base. What's it feel? It's eight weeks of training that transform a civilian into a United States Airman. And so this is where their their Air Force career starts. And then it's also kind of the gateway into going further into their Air Force career. So they start here and they graduate here um, throughout basic training. They put blood, sweat and tears onto all these drill pads, um, changed who they are as an individual to become a better individual here at Lackland Air Force Base. And on graduation day, just seeing how proud everyone in the stands is, how much taller they stand up on graduation day, how much taller you stand up as well. Just seeing that they they set their mind to something and they were able to accomplish it. And now they're gonna go out and do amazing things for our Air Force. Roe v. Wade overturned by the Supreme Court. Today, the impact, the real-time fallout, breaking new details, what it now means for women all across the nation. Today on a special edition of ABC's This Week. Mother Nature put on a show earlier this week that was scary, but beautiful. That was qu time. quite the show, to say the least. So check it out. Let's see if we get the video up. Three separate water spouts spotted Twisting off the coast of Alabama. Fortunately, they stayed over the water. No damages, no injuries reported. But the National Weather Service did issue a special marine warning for the coastal region. Their appearance just ended up being a dazzling display of the power of Mother Nature. And I will be honest, mm. uh -huh. I had to ask what a water spout was because this is a first. I mean, it looks... A little scary. It's yeah. a column of rotating air over the water. Very similar to a tornado and typically a lot weaker than a tornado, but I loved it. It kind of looked like War of the Worlds. Yes. It was kind of <laughs> crazy to see that. That was awesome. Uh, but yeah, that was way off in Alabama. Today in San Antonio, Texas, we are going to be hot, but there is relief in sight in the form of at least a chance for rain. Outside right now, though, it is 80 degrees. It feels like 84 because of high humidity. South-southwest at about 10 miles per hour. That's where the wind is coming from right now. And today it'll be 101 in New Braunfels, 101 in Gonzales, 103 in Del Rio, 98 in Kerrville, 101 in Hondo, 102 in Pleasanton. Here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast for San Antonio. A few clouds out there right now as we head toward lunch. We'll have mostly sunny skies and temperatures will be in the low 90s in the afternoon, mid to upper 90s. We start to introduce a 10% chance for a stray shower this afternoon. If you're lucky, you'll get a little rain in your back backyard this afternoon. It'll be 101 in San Antonio for the high, our 22nd 100 degree day so far this year. And even in the evening, it's going to be warm. Now, Looking ahead, though, temperatures are going to come down closer to the average. It's still going to be warm outside, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, temperatures should be in the low to mid 90s, all because we have a chance for some rain and a cool front on the way. 80 in San Antonio right now, 79 in New Braunfels, 79 in Hondo, 77 in Yavaldi, 82 in Pleasanton. But you take a wider view here and you can see the cooler air. It's 61 degrees in Amarillo, even in the 50s in Park parts of Colorado right now. Uh, now that front is going to be moving through early tomorrow morning. It's not going to drop us down into the 50s or even into the 60s, but it is going to bring a chance for some 
showers. You can see that there already are some showers along that cool front up in the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. That's going to combine with some tropical moisture from the Gulf. Look out toward New Orleans and even uh, parts of the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. There's an area of disorganized thunderstorms. It has a low chance of developing into a tropical depression or greater in the next couple of days, about a 20% chance. But we're not really concerned about development. The thing that this is going to bring us is some tropical moisture. Anywhere you see here this red color, that is rich tropical moisture that's going to be moving across the Gulf in the coming hours and into early tomorrow morning. That tropical moisture will be in South Central Texas along with that cool front. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means early tomorrow morning during the morning commute, there could be a few thunder showers out there isolated at best. But as we head into the afternoon, that tropical moisture increases tomorrow af late afternoon and evening is when we have a chance for some widely scattered showers and storms. It's been a while since I've been able to show this much rain potential on the map here. A and again, unfortunately, it's not going to rain in everyone's backyard, but there is a good chance for widely scattered showers and storms both tomorrow and Tuesday, even Wednesday and Thursday, the chance for rain is there. It'll be more isolated as that tropical moisture uh, continues to hang around. So all in all, we've got about a 40% chance for widely scattered showers and storms tomorrow and Tuesday, especially during the second part of the day tomorrow, and 30% chance on Wednesday and Thursday. Again, the rain is not a slam dunk, but areas that do see rain will see anywhere from a quarter to half an inch of rainfall through Thursday with some of the heavier rainfall amounts really for the Houston Gallison area, one to three inches of rainfall there. So even though not everyone is going to see rain, there is a good chance for rain this week, especially tomorrow and Tuesday, and those highs will be coming down into the low 90s across South Central Texas, closer to the seasonable average, and we'll probably end the triple digit streak at least temporarily because we've still got July. We've still got August. We've still got parts of <laughs> September to get through. We'll probably add on some triple digit days again by the end of the summer. Hey, I just got the pollen count in. I'll have an updated look at that after the, the break here in a bit. All right. There's Bobby. Thank you so much. Hey, guess what? Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. There we go. All right. So the Spurs introducing their three new teammates, three first round picks. There's a big press conference. Well, private press conference at the AT&T Center. The jersey's already made. There he is. Ninth overall pick, Jeremy Sohan, wearing number 10. If you're a Spurs history buff, not even that historical, the jersey famously worn by another man who loves to dye his hair while in San Antonio. Dennis Rodman. So we also have two new players as well. We got 20th overall, Malachi Branham. He will wear number 22. And the 25th overall pick, Blake Wesley, getting number 14. All three of these guys, one and dones out of college, meaning they just spent a year as a freshman. And it is another sign that San Antonio embracing this youth movement, but I am so optimistic, so excited for this upcoming season. I love this youth movement. We showed a lot of talent. And these guys, I'm excited for what they're going to bring. All right, so a lot of questions regarding this man on and off the field, Deshaun Watson, his short-term future with the Browns now coming into focus. Cleveland's quarterback is set to have a hearing next week with NFL disciplinary officer Sue L. Robinson. That is being reported by the Associated Press. Now, there's a lot of questions regarding Watson. Remember, he's facing a possible suspension from the league stemming from accusations of sexual misconduct by two dozen massage therapists in Texas. So only time will tell what happens to Deshaun. And we will obviously stay on top of the story on air and online as more information becomes available. Time now, 8.51, 80 degrees out. Tomorrow on GMSA, critical training is taking place right here in Military City, USA. From flight safety procedures to the fundamentals of aerodynamics and more, crucial to the success of transport missions around the world. Tomorrow on GMSA, we take you inside the Joint Base San Antonio's Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence, and they're responsible for producing elite air crews. And the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police trying to figure out what exactly happened that sparked a shooting in the parking lot of the Manhattan nightclub. This happening here in San Antonio, the 3800 block of Blanco Road. Now, gunshots rang out about 2.30 this morning. Four people shot. 
Two rushed to the hospital in critical condition. We're told two other people managed to drive themselves to the hospital. And police tell us multiple shell casings found in the parking lot. Officers at the scene saying they believe it was a fight inside the club. It escalated to gunfire outside. Authorities still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened and who was responsible. In the pollen count today, molds are at 210 in the 210. Pretty <laughs> low there for those molds. And no Saharan dust out there. Oh, in the coming days, we're going to have widely scattered showers and storms. And temperatures will be in the 90s. So again, I got to emphasize this. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's going to see rain, but the chance is there. So that's that's good. Just saying there's a chance. Saying there's a chance. Right. Terrence Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us Absolutely. this morning. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday.